On November 11, 2024, the 29th Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change was held in Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. On the first day of the opening, Article 6.4 of the Paris Agreement was approved, marking a historic moment for the global carbon market. The Article 6.4 aims to establish an internationally supervised carbon trading market under the United Nations, providing a guiding framework for global carbon trading, allowing countries to buy and sell each other's emissions, thereby creating found flows between developed countries, high-emitting countries, and emerging economies. How will the Article 6.4 be effectively advanced? What impact will it have on the global carbon market? Martin Hessian, vice chair of the Article 6.4 supervisory body, provided a deeper interpretation in the interview. I think we changed the rules to submit us. Uh, what parents is more effective and more fair? I know you want a concrete example, but like, let, let's say that we're replacing a fossil fuel power plant with renewables, that would be a decrease in uh, emissions, mm -hmm. which the, the, the credits would be shared between the two countries. And um, you might also have a, a removal project where uh, oxygen or mm -hmm. CO2 is taken out of the air and uh, stored, or forestry projects where mm -hmm. that also happens. So, so essentially, there's a whole range of things that can be done, and it will depend on the different countries what they see as transformation. Yeah. There'll be cheap things that they want to do themselves, and then the more expensive things, which I think is an important thing that they might want to sell in the international market. But we're dependent on that demand, and we're also depending on the host countries very much to decide what is transformational for them. Yeah, so during next year? Uh, oh, during COP, um, yes. So we're expecting a, a negotiation process where further guidance will be given to the body. And parties, you know, will be expressing concerns, priorities, I mean, you know, we, we wait to hear. Um, obviously, we're very aware of what parties are saying. There are differences of views and different things, but, but I think broadly there's a, a welcoming of this. Oh, and worth coming and hearing. But, uh, and, and obviously, we will get a decision that we need to respond to. Um, on, a, on a boring level, we've got a work program to address a lot of issues um, in the, the of implementation that we need to do. As Maria was saying, we're expecting the first methodologies to be read on and established towards the middle of the end of next year. We've got methodologies in the process of the moment. So this decision frees up um, that process and gives it a direction. So the first projects are probably going to be those that are in transitions you know, from, from the CDM to the new ones. I think we expect them um, certainly you know, by the end of next year or early next month. We have a system of, um, they're called DOEs, but we, we have a system of accrediting um, uh, that um, typically in the past it's been com companies like DNV, people who have credit standards and device and different things. Uh, so we have our own accreditation standard where they have to have particular competencies. And it'll be the, the, the third party verifier market, DNV. I can't remember the names of all of them, but essentially the, the, it's the, they're in the business of verifying things. And um, we will have a process to make sure that they are doing correctly and that they have the politics that will be required them to have. And that process is ongoing as well. It's always an argument to have a standard on UN agency. I, I, I think um, we can't do everything on our own. And we get criticism that uh, it's, you know, we need to have a third party independent voice. Um, we got that criticism of the peers, and I think we do have an independent third party of the but we will see that. Um, and I think, in terms of uh, obviously, we'll be checking the projects and checking all the standards ourselves, but th to have that third voice um, is, is important. We've had offers to do this from different agencies, but I think that this is the system that's the most flexible and can be deployed you know, the most effectively. It's, For the investors to engage the, the, the verification. I have my motto as well, effective yeah. and fair. Yeah. Fair is about distribution of benefits, Correct. right? And we have many provisions within our yes, yes. about ensuring that local communities are consulted. We obviously, the country itself yeah. has to approve. Yeah. I mean, these are features that don't exist in the broader market, 
we're, we're a UN-based system responsible to parties, and we have processes in place that are not just about consulting the party, but about consulting the local communities, indigenous people, affected people, and a grievance system that things can come directly to us, complaints about how the tool has been implemented, mm -hmm. um, and appeals against our decisions, should we get it wrong. So so I, I think there's a there's a process for access to, to justice, if you can call it that, or access to and uh, make sure that we're doing what we say we want to. I, I, don't, I, it's, I don't think it's my business or our business to tell you that, because we, we are an enabler, right? and I think we're setting out a high quality standard, and there are arguments that um, if we set it too high, people will go elsewhere. But uh, what we're saying is that this is the high quality, this is Paris Alliance, and if you want to do something that's contributing to 1.5 and distributes the benefits, come to us. It's not going to be cheaper, um, because guess what, getting to 1.5 is actually a significant, uh, well, there's a significant cost to it. We will reduce the cost of that, and we will make sure that um, there's a fairness in doing that, I think. Well, I mean, now I'm, this is getting into commercial stuff, right? I mean, the, the, for, first of all, there's a process to get to the tub, and then there's a price associated with that tub. Um, and people will invest in getting that tub based on what they th price they think they will get to it. And, and, you know, I can't speak to the different commercial arrangements that might give. The unit of value is this tub, and what its value is is dependent on the demand. Uh, and then people will invest and take risks around price as the markets do. That's their job, not ours. Like yeah, we're not, we're not setting a price. Yeah. And sadly, we're not in charge of the price. Uh, we're just in charge of the quality of the supply. Um, well, there is demand out there, certainly, and we've heard uh, from others out there. But, but I, I also, you know, I, I, I want to underline that the figures that we get are dependent on some assumptions, right? And uh, carbon market players will tell you trillions. But it's based on the assumption that we have NDCs that are consistent with 1.5, which we don't have, and it's highly dependent on people being willing to do the trade. And I think the willingness to do the trade is really just, does depend on whether it's effective, effective for countries. I mean, whether it's effective and whether it's fair. And that's what we're trying to do. So I don't know that the demand is there for, you know, those big values. Uh, but we're certainly enabling it, you know. The door is open if you want to come. I think we have a mixture of both. Like, there's some countries that have already uh, said that they need to buy hundreds of millions of tons. So that's significant demand, maybe not the contents that we can find. So we, we will have uh, our encouragers come to buy. And there are companies interested in buying. You know, I, I haven't done the research exactly, but I use uh, the International Emissions Trading at our side event yesterday. We're saying that significant interest in this high quality thing, uh, and companies will come to us. Um, and I know that countries are.